the next thing here is um, how do you b balance getting things done in the physical realm without burning yourself out? It is indeed the balance itself. It's the balls that the jester sometimes is just throwing up there because it all seems so silly when you really think about it. <clears throat> so that's why I'm saying there's two different there's two different beings here. You're talking to the physical body that lives in a matrix versus the spirit or the soul, or whatever name you want to give it today, and the multiple layers that don't have beginning and ends, don't have the same geometry limit, geometric limitations of the entity known as the human and how we exist. But that doesn't mean that you just go and sit down all day and wait for your life to be over, right? You want to interact with this reality and you want to make things happen to the best level of, the, of your cognizance of what you should be doing. So that puts you into this process of figuring out how, oh, I see what pinning is for now. <laughs> it, it brings you to this process of uh, figuring out exactly how to how to manage both because obviously the reason why the physical reality is going to be very silly to a, a, a spiritual person or a person who's tapped into themselves is because at the end of the day you can't let it get to you meaning that all you can't jump right into this and feel like it's real so much that it starts to affect your spirit because you've already learned in your spirit that that is the highest state that you are existing in and and it's unmovable it's not able to be affected so if you then go down the ladder and then start playing this game that you're really being affected, that you're really having a hard time, that you, you're really mad about things, that people do that that haven't reached a higher stage of consciousness. But once you've reached a higher stage of consciousness, doing that continuously would be very damaging. So what happens is, is you start to make some amends with yourself. You have to sit down at one point and say, okay, so what is it that you're trying to do anyway? What do you want to do anyway? What equals fulfillment for you, not success. Success is just, A, I got it right now. It's working for me. I made it happen. Okay, what do I do next? That's success. Fulfillment is like when you don't really have the wherewithal to keep moving around or to keep interacting and those, those kind of things, the day will come that you're completely, you don't feel like, oh man, I missed out on my life that I'm still trying to get to this certain level that I can't believe I wasted my life. You don't feel any of that. You feel, hey, I'm ready to move on and in many cases, you may know where you're going if you adapt to a lot of this uh, much more expanded knowledge that's coming out about what we really are and how we really connect to ourselves beyond just these physical bodies. So to answer the question, what I do is I can't say that every single day I just come in here and it's perfect for me. I have definitely been driving really hard in a certain level where it's almost unbelievable um, meaning that if I just turn the cameras on, let a person see how many different things I do every single day, like different things that are not even related, but I have to be in there doing that, it will seem almost like maybe somewhat disheartening. Like, hey, if I have to do all that, then I'm not interested. But what I did, because I didn't know all that stuff at first, many things I trained myself, is I started to say, well, still, anyway, your day is going to come. I mean, the day is going to come when you're going to expand beyond this or contract. And because of that, it means that it's almost like the Iron Man race. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other and, and you'll realize that the champion is a mindset. It's not so much as whether you won whatever race they set up, which many people started running before you even thought it was a race. It's about whether you feel like a champion and whether you feel like you're making headway. Now, of course, there's going to be uphills and downhills to your journey and your travel. Like... Everything about dealing with gravity puts some kind of strain on you, but the strain has been shown to strengthen a lot of the, the beings that have come across this realm. So what I do is, is that I try, first of all, to find the encouragement within myself because I know that if I'm not self-motivated, then it's all going to fall apart anyway, because if I'm depending on something or someone, my oversoul really wants to teach me to depend on myself. So what kind of lesson is it going to give me in this universe or university? It's probably going to give me some level of betrayal. It's going to give me some level of, uh, of abandonment. It's going to give me some of those things so that way I can understand that, hey, there's still going to be that point when all this, let's say, this field shuts down and the other one opens up. It doesn't mean that it's going to shut down also for everyone that was in that reality. And on top of that, it doesn't even matter. What's most important is it's shutting down for you and now it must open back up again. And I think the biggest part of this, and I can only say think because this is my opinion, the biggest part of this is, is that when you want 
to live again. You want to experience. Notice how one of the biggest things happening here is that people feel like their physical reality stinks. And it's because it's so manipulated and all these different things that are happening. And I agree that there's a lot of buffoonery happening. But at the end of the day, let's say, for instance, if I leave with a mindset where somebody else spoiled it for me or something else spoiled it for me, that's either going to allow me to redo this entire thing over again or it's going to allow me to somehow not get fulfilled. So at the end of the day, I find that those personal goals, like when you see, like I used to read these encyclopedias and I noticed how there was like all these people that we never heard of, right, that have done things, right? And as I was reading this encyclopedia, like, you know, people that have created different things and stuff, I was like, man, I may not even be on the level where I really even created anything yet, let alone there's people who've created things that they, we still virtually forgot about. Here's the proof. So this means that the whole goal shouldn't be for people to remember you and the people to know all you, the, know you. The, people, the goal is, is for them to interact with you through what you create. So then you'll find that your best form of communication, for me, actually is not talking. It is actually building things. I have to keep talking because the crickets start going on with all the chat and the sites and all that if I don't come out and say something because I'm in the tool shed working. But the truth is, is that the main thing to me, like I talked about yesterday, is because everything is centered around communication. Having this multifaceted expression of ability to communicate beyond language allows you to not find yourself frustrated and pent up. So then that doesn't equal that a, I didn't really accomplish anything and I'm burning out. You start being able to look at everything and say, no, but on that arena, yeah, there's only that much done. But on these other arenas, there's so much done. Um, even in just how to look at this, and this is not directly related to uh, cryptos, but let's say, for instance, one of the benefits of being your own bank is you did that. Like at the end of the day, even if the bank didn't work that well, even if you made some bad trades and you know now you got to hold and just wait for it to recover, the truth is, is that you still stepped out there with the intention to become your own bank. That's the truth. Like now people who sit out there with the intention to make money, that's their intentions. That's the way they look at it. So notice how the way that you look at things always equates to the value of it. Like if I look at someone that I'm with as being the most important thing for me and being a vital part of who I am and what makes me me, then they're given a certain level of value in, in my economy, in my bank, right? And when you devalue them, of course, they have that much meaning to you. So this is why you really want to get yourself in control and say, am I working on things that are valuable to me? Is the changes that I'm making with others valuable to me? Not is it valuable to them? Like that's a given. That's obvious. If it becomes valuable to you and you're doing something that you feel has value within it, then it's going to go right to that person in that same way because that's called intentions, right? So when your intentions are, are in the proper place, it gives you a great deal of unsluggish strength to endure the numbing because I'm not going to tell you, oh, it's easy. <laughs> I just do it. No, it's numbing. Like some of this stuff and how it's designed and how it's put together was designed directly for robots. Like this was like thought about by people who were writing in a robotic language to talk to a robot and then putting something on it that would make it more easier for us to interact with is just now really happening. Like apps like Flux, right? That help your eyes because at a certain night, time of the night, you're still looking at the screen. The screen's sitting at, let's say 5,200 Kelvin. That's about daylight, right? So it's your eyes, which can't necessarily tell the difference between that and the sun shining, really. And now this process of the serotonin and melatonin and all the rest of the stuff that needs to happen and the healing that needs to take place, just like all the rest of the animals and things that are asleep that are generally awake in the daytime, doesn't happen because of staring at the computer screen, right? So things are invented like flux that naturally control the, the, shine, the glow of the screen or the intensity of the brightness during the day to completely taper off by the time it's night. And it kind of looks yellow, so that way you can get proper sleep. So, again, the augmenting, which is going to be necessary for many people because you still got jobs. You're still working in different places. You're still doing things that are not exactly in line with your vision, but know your vision. Because once you know your vision and know your focus, it's easy to line things up to serving you. It's easy to not waste energy to, and by knowing that if someone throws you off or treats you the wrong way or whatever, you immediately can say in your mind, 
See, that's why I'm becoming sovereign, because I don't have to deal with that anymore because I'm going to be removed from this entire situation. Let me just keep, keep pushing out my plan, keep pushing out my plan and keep living my plan until it's complete.